from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max, make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson we take a look at subdivision and displacement mapping in Arnold for 3ds Max. In the previous lesson we discussed uh, bump and normal mapping workflow and in this one we take a look at subdivision and displacement mapping. We have this very simple scene as you can see we just have this simple box. Now if I select the box and go to its modify panel I can apply an Arnold properties modifier and here is where you control the displacement and the subdivision settings. Now before talking about displacement we need to understand the subdivision settings and how it works. So let me go to my material editor and this is the material that we have it applied to our box here. If I right click and go to the maps, Arnold, I think it's in the utility we have this wireframe map and I can assign it to the base color and now if I run the active shade we can see a wireframe of the geometry that we are rendering okay now let me close this and take a look at the first of all subdivision setting let me just enable it and uh, the first thing we have is the uh, iteration which specifies how many times the mesh should be subdivided so at zero no subdivision one to we get more and more subdivisions. Now before taking a more in-depth look at the iteration, we have this subdivision type. So we have none, when set to none, obviously we are not gonna get any subdivision. Uh, we have this linear type. And when set to linear, as you increase the number of iteration, you can see, so that's zero, one, two, three, four, five uh, you are adding more polygons to your geometry without changing or compromising the shape of the geometry now when the iteration is set to zero there would be no subdivision when i increase it to one we have generated four faces of each original face when increase it to something like two uh, we have quadruple the number of polygons again go to three we have quadruple the number of faces again so each time you increase the iteration by one you have four times more polys compared to before but in linear mode you keep the original shape of the object if i set the type uh, from linear to catmull clark you can see now instead of the cubical shape that we had before now we get this rounded more spherical shape the catmull clark algorithm is used to create smooth surfaces by recursive subdivision surface modeling so as i increase the iteration so let's get back to uh, that was zero one two three four so as i increase it um I'm not only adding more geometry, I also make the geometry rounder and smoother. Now we talked about the iteration which specifies how many times the mesh should be subdivided. Uh, other important options in the subdivision section is this uh, UV smoothing types. UV smoothing controls the algorithm used to smooth the UV vertices in the mesh when you are subdividing it. Pin corners pins the four corners of our UV and the rest of our UV might move as we subdivide our mesh. Pin border will pin all the edges of our UV. Linear will pin everything so the UV will stay as it was before subdividing. And smooth will basically move the UV vertices as we subdivide our, mo our mesh. And uh, in this mode, no pinning will be applied basically. Now that we have this foundation about subdivision and its settings, we can talk about the uh, displacement workflow. Displacement allows you to create real geometric detail based on a texture. The difference between displacement mapping and bump mapping is bump mapping was just an illusion. We wouldn't alter ge the geometry itself, but displacement mapping actually creates and alters the geometry. Now let's start working with the displacement obviously you need to enable displacement first of all and the next thing would be to define a displacement map so in this case let me set the type for now to linear 
and close the active shade for now. Go to my material editor here. I'm just going to actually disconnect this wireframe map. Now let's create a new bitmap or let's use the Arnold texture image here. It can be either one. And I have this um, map called disk32, which is a 32-bit TIFF file. And let's use this as our displacement map. Okay, turn on use map. And let's run the active shade. In order to displacement map to work, I'm going to increase my bound padding to one. Height obviously is the amount of displacement mapping. So if set to zero, there would be no displacement mapping. And if set to three, uh, you're gonna get displacement mapping. Obviously, in order to have correct displacement mapping, you need to have enough iteration and enough polys to actually work with. Right now, as you can see, we get this distorted shape because simply we don't have enough iteration and enough polys to support the, the map that we have assigned to our displacement map. So in this case, let's increase the iteration, maybe something like six. Now, as you can see, we get a correct shape. Now, the next important parameter that we have adjusted was this uh, bounce pad or bounce padding, which defines how much to extend the bounding box of the object so that it can include any additional displacement coming from the displacement shader. So when the padding is set to zero, like here, let me actually increase the, okay, that's cool. Now. When the padding is set to zero because we don't have big enough bounding box, we see this uh, artifacts, even though it's not quite visible in this shape, but in some cases we can see some artifacts because we don't have big enough bounding box. By increasing the padding and extending the bounding box, basically, let's set it to something like one here, we will be able to get our displacement mapping the way it's supposed to look. Now you need to really use this while you sparingly when one works never go to two that will increase your render time. Sometimes you really need to increase the bound padding to maybe two, three, but in this case uh, probably the bound padding of one would be just enough. So let's go to maybe something like six and zero out the bound padding. Now you can actually see the problem a bit more obviously you can see how the silhouette is unchanged on this side because we don't have enough bound padding or in this case you can see these edges are quite flat because simply the bounding box is small and we need to increase the bound padding and extend the bounding box to make sure it includes uh, the amount of height and the map that we have defined in this case probably bound padding of two would be uh, needed but let's set the height to three and bounce pad bounce pad to one and finally, we have this zero value, which is uh, applied as a shift to the displacement amount. It defines the value of the displacement map that is considered to be zero displacement map. By default, it is set to zero, so the black values of the texture are not gonna get any displacement. And uh, so zero displacement, and everything brighter is gonna dis be displaced to the outward direction. When set to something like, let's say 0.5, 50% gray will be zero displacement, darker values in the texture will be displaced inward and brighter values will be displaced outward. And when set to one, white pixels will have zero displacement and darker values will be displaced inward. For now, let's set the zero value to zero. And we have this enable auto bump option. Uh, which puts the high frequencies of a displacement map into the bump attribute so that you do not need as many subdivision iteration values. And I suggest to have it turn on so to uh, get higher quality displacement mapping, especially with uh, normal displacement mapping. So the grayscale maps that we have defined here, which is considered a normal displacement mapping. And we take a quick look at the vector displacement mapping in a second. So as you can see, when enable auto bump is checked we get this very detailed edges and corners and if i disable it we get a more generic map so this is just displacement mapping but as soon as you enable auto bump now you get all of the detail uh, because arnold puts the high frequencies of the texture that you have defined here in the bump attribute 
so it's gonna be fast easy and you're gonna get a lot more detail compared to not having this option enabled okay now let's try another displacement map here in this case let's load the simple this brick displacement here let me set the tiling to something like point five and point five then use it here and this is the map that we are using basically for the displacement map here now if i run the active shade for this map you probably need a higher level of iteration probably something like eight so as you can see based on the map that you have defined and the amount of detail that it has you might need to increase the iteration while you and change the height zero or bounce pad values now another topic i want to talk about is uh, vector displacement mapping uh, basically um, normal displacement mapping is the more traditional one like what we have been doing here when you have a grayscale image and you want to add displacement based on that grayscale texture but vector displacement can also displace the mesh in different directions besides only up and down that we have with normal uh, displacement now obviously you use vector displacement mapping when you have a map exported out of a sculpting tool like zbrush or modbox and uh, the workflow here let's let me close the active shade hide the box and let's uh, create a plane let me move it up assign the shader here go to the modify panel we need an Arnold properties modifier here enable displacement enable subdivision when working with vector displacement mapping you want the type to be set to Cadmo Clark and let's set the iteration to something like uh, probably five and let's load our vector map here general bitmap I have this ear displacement map here so let me load it now instead of actually uh, assigning the map directly what you need to do is to uh, add what's called a vector map so I think it's in the utilities or the conversion there we go here's the vector map so you need to connect your map to the vector map input here and assign the vector map to the displacement map here now this way you have a lot of additional controls to the map that you have loaded here so you can match the look of your displacement mapping to what it was looking back in the sculpting tool so in this case let's run the active shade and see what we get we probably need to increase the scale and here the scale controls the amount of displacement mapping so let's go something like 10 maybe 25 obviously as you can see we have some uh, bounce pads issues so let's increase the bounce padding to something like uh, probably let's see three four you can see five five would be enough in this case and now as you can see we have this ear geometry using the vector displacement mapping okay so in this lesson we discussed subdivision mapping and displacement mapping in arnold for 3ds max i will see you in the next lesson thank you for watching this free video tutorial from our course comprehensive introduction to arnold for 3ds max make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out